Jonathan Lohara, and I'm joined by a bunch of people in, in the house. Say hello, everyone. Uh, tonight, uh, it's a DunJS LA. We're going to go through the Canvas clock guide uh, on canjs.com. Uh, we're going to learn uh, some basics of CanJS and kind of building stuff with components and um, some basics of the clock API, or uh, not the clock API, the Canvas API. Um, and learn how to do some simple drawing. Uh, and in, in that, there's going to be a little bit of math, but we'll be able to power through it. Uh, all right, let me go ahead and share my screen. And cool. So to uh, start off with, so I said, my name is Jason. Um, we were talking a little bit before. I've been developing for a little over a decade. I currently work for Batovi. Um, we help people build amazing applications. Uh, we focus on web, but do um, the whole array. Um, and a lot of what we do is build open source software and uh, publish that to the world. We've been doing this for the entire decade that we've been around. Uh, we're going to be talking about CanJS today, which comes from uh, JavaScript MVC, which had some other uh, name uh, before that, all the way back to like late 2007, early 2008. Um, so open source is our passion. We love uh, we love publishing open source software. We love helping people get involved and contribute, and um, you know use um, use projects. Um, so what we're going to build today is this um, these clocks. Uh, I guess we've got three technically. So this one, this one's the really simple one. It's that's just the date object showing, um, showing the current time. Uh, then we've got this digital clock, um, and we'll see under the hood. This is a CanJS component that's um, that's rendering the time, uh, and then we've got this uh, clock that's drawn with Canvas, which is another CanJS uh, component. Um, but it's all you know, just regular Canvas JavaScript to be able to draw the circle, uh, draw the second hand as it ticks around. Same thing with the minute and hour hand. You guys get the picture. Um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about CanJS. How many people have heard of CanJS before coming to this meetup? It's got one. Awesome. Really ex excited to show you guys like what can what CanJS is and kind of go through the basics. Um, so first off, it's a client-side client -side JavaScript framework. Um, it's, it starts off really simple, right? There's, I, I think there's kind of three main concepts um, to think about when like building a CanJS application. Um, the first is that we push components. How many people have built applications um, kind of with a component architecture or heard of custom elements or that sort of thing. Yeah, cool. So definitely within our industry, it's become practice, um, become best practice to build, um, build small testable components um, that you can um, reuse within your application. So CanJS is built on this idea. And the main API that you have to care about is can component. Um, and there's three parts to it. One, you give it a custom element tag. So when you put, like in this case, my counter into your HTML, then it can render this component. Then what is it going to render? Well, the view. So here, um, we, we just have the uh, template literal to have you know, multi-line JavaScript. Um, and this is going to, if you've used uh, handlebars or mustache or that sort of thing, this is going to look a little bit familiar with uh, to you. Um, so curly braces and then the name of like a property or kind of the name of a variable uh, in your templates. And then there's interactive bits you can do too. So like this is listening for just a regular JavaScript click event, and then it's going to call this method when the button is clicked. So where do these come from? Uh, and that's the last bit of uh, CanJS is the view model. So We've got our view. We've got our uh, what we call a stash template. That's the language. Um, and then the view model is kind of the model that's backing the view. So in our case, we're saying our view model is going to have a count property. And the default value is going to start off at 0. And it's going to have an increment method um, that all that's going to do is increment the, the count uh, for the component's view model. And that's it for. Uh, for this component. So um, we could even 
look under the hood. It's just rendering this my counter, uh, is that large? Let me bump that up a little bit. Um, so it's just rendering the my counter custom element. And then inside, um, it can render um, the count and the, uh, and the button that's defined in our view. That's the same thing that we're seeing here, count with the span and then a button around it. Um, so those are like the main concepts of CanJS. You build components that have a stash template that are backed by a view model that have all of the properties and um, methods that you need. And then everything else is just more components uh, building on top of each other. Any any questions or comments about uh, this stuff before we before we move on? No, cool. We'll be we'll be doing a lot of uh, this today of like creating a component, figuring out what our view is, what properties we want in the view model, and then to have it rendered. Um, I guess the the last thing I should have mentioned uh, that just it seems so natural to me, but I remember that it's not. Um, so here, we don't have any logic for how we're going to update the DOM. There's no manipulation of like creating a text node and then a span element and then appending this child. There's no um, calling like add event listener to set up the, um, the click listener or if the component were removed from the page, making sure we call remove event listener. Um, when we increment the count here in the view model, there's no logic to um, you know, have the count um, be updated in the DOM. Um, that is all abstracted away from you, um, and it's just handled by CanJS. So you don't, basically, so you don't have to spend time writing the glue code of, of you know, the DOM manipulation to um, to display what you want. Um, you can just let uh, CanJS's observable system update things automatically. So if a value changes, it will change everywhere. If that value is used in a template or somewhere else in the view model or that sort of thing. Cool. Any any questions or comments before we move on? Yeah. So, like, what are like some specific use cases that you would use this just to make something simple? Um, so this is a super simple example, and the like the canvas uh, clock that we're going to be building is another kind of simple example. Um, but it starts from the simplicity and builds up to yeah w whatever you need in your application. So um, you know we we started working on CanJS and JavaScript and VC um, well before um, React or Angular or Vue. Um, and now they all kind of cover a similar use case of you know building rich user interfaces without having to do the DOM manipulation on your own. Cool. Any other questions or comments before we move on? Awesome. Um, so if you haven't already uh, on your laptop, go to canjs.com uh, and uh, click on the guides link that's in the. Um, in the sidebar on the left. And under there, under recipes, there's going to be the canvas clock link. And that's the guide that we're going to kind of walk through together today. Raise your hand when you've got that open on your laptop. Cool. Um, OK. So the format of what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, uh, let me scroll past this a little bit. Um, for each step, let me bump this up a little bit. Um, maybe not that much. Um, so for each step, um, we're going to talk about uh, the problem of the next thing that we want to do um, and what we're trying to accomplish. And this is going to be broken up into smaller steps so we're only tackling a little thing at a time. Um, so we're going to talk about what we want to do uh, and what we need to know in order to do it. So we're going to talk about those CanJS fundamentals. We're going to talk about the Canvas fundamentals of you know, the drawing API and that sort of thing. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about all of the information that you kind of need to know. Um, and where it's required, um, we'll also talk about like what we need to do. How do you know you have the right answer? 
Um, and for each of these, I want to take a few minutes for us to try and complete it on our own. And then we'll talk about a solution together. And one thing uh, that I really like about our guides is for each step, uh, when you get down, I'm going to cheat and just look at a solution real quick. When you get down to a solution, so it has like all of the highlighted code that you'll need to add to yours. And in the upper right, there's always a copy button that you'll be able to take the entire code and get up to uh, uh, get up to where you need to be. So you can mess around with uh, coming up with a solution on your own, and then when we go through it together, you'll be able to you know, copy and paste the same code so we're all on the same page. Um, so let's get started. So we talked a little bit about, OK, this is the clock that we're going to build. Um, we're going to create components for uh, each part of this. And this entire, um, this entire uh, application, even the, the very root of our application is going to be a component. Like everything's a component. Um, and we'll use, we'll render this just with the DOM, and then we'll um, render the, um, the analog clock with Canvas. Um, so if you're, on, if you're on the guide page, scroll down to the setup section. Or in the um, in the black bar, there's also the nav there, and you can go to setup um, and click on the uh, the um, bold JS bin button uh, that's at the top left corner of the JS bin. That'll open it in a new window, and then what you can do is go to file and click clone, and then you'll have your own copy of um, of the code. And could you raise your hand when you've when you've done that. Cool. Um, so let's go through like what's in the code to start off with. Um, I'm going to close each of these just to, just to be able to focus. Um, so our HTML is real simple. Uh, we're bringing in uh, can, CanJS through a script tag. Uh, normally, you would bring it in with uh, NPM or something like that. Um, for using like a JS bin, just the script tag is, is handy. Um, and then we have a clock controls um, custom element, um, which will um, look at the JavaScript for that. So we saw on the home page that can component example. Um, this is very similar, where we have clock controls defined as our custom elements tag name. Uh, we have, I'm going to look at the view first. Um, we have a view, which is. Um, a paragraph with the time, and then we want um, we want a digital clock component. We're going to build that. We want an analog clock component, which is going to be the canvas one. We're going to build that. And um, this syntax here is passing time into those components. So digital clock is going to have a property on its view model called time. We're going to, instead of like, each, each of them having their own time that they have to keep track of. We're just going to give them the time. And same thing for analog clock. So the last bit is the view model. So here, we're defining um, all of the properties that we need for our stash template. Um, so there's a time property. And uh, its value is uh, going to be the logic that's in here. So what we do is every second, we want uh, we want one second to um, to pass and to update our time. So we have a set, a set interval um, which changes the the um, time property to be a new date, and we start off with um, the current time, um, and that's what the resolve is is giving it a value, uh, and then what we return is whatever cleanup is required. So in our example, we're never removing the clock controls element from the DOM. It's always going to be there. Um, but in an actual application where you show a component and then you stop showing a component, um, then you might want to do some cleanup after yourself. Um, so that's what the clear interval is doing. Uh, any questions about this? Cool. Um, OK, so we, ha we have our setup. Um, we've already, OK, so we talked about all of this. Um, and there's nothing to, for us to do in the setup phase other than like click the JS bin and, and um, uh, clone it. Um, 
Okay, so the first thing that we're actually going to build is the digital clock component. So this is the one with, it's just showing numbers, nothing related to Canvas. So we want to create a digital clock custom element. Uh, we want to um, pass the time from clock controls to the digital clock. That's already kind of done for you in the, uh, in the JS bin. Um, and then in our digital clock, we want to write out the hours, minutes, and seconds. So this we've already talked about. So um, to create a like digital clock component, we'll want to use can components, um, like the clock controls that we already have. Um, we'll want to give it a tag. Uh, the view should be um, something like this to write out the time. Um, and then our view model is going to have all of the properties we need to, to display stuff in the view. Um, what this is saying is um, under the hood, uh, the, the way that you define a view, a view model, what the object looks like is, um, is defined by a package called can define map. Um, and basically the gist of it is when you have a property um, you can either give it an object to describe it, like we had the value earlier, or you can just give it a type. So here we can say, okay, this property should just be a new instance of this type. We can also have methods on the view model that we can call within the stash template to be able to render some content. So we can have logic in here, and then in the view part or in the, the stash template part, um, we can call that method from the view model um, just like you would call a function. Um, you can call that method and it'll just print out in the page, uh, you know, whatever value you're returning here. Um, then the last bit, this is just some, some JavaScript. Um, the, uh, and you can click on these links to see the docs on MDN for stuff. Um, so the, um, you can create a new date and it has get seconds, get minutes, get hours. Um, and then you can use, um, uh, string dot pad start um, or string dot pad start to change a string and pad it out with however many zeros. Um, so what we want to do is uh, create a digital clock component. Uh, we want to have time passed to it, and then in our view, we want to render the hours, the minutes, and the seconds. Any questions before you guys hack a little bit to try and come up with a solution? OK, cool. I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes. Um, and uh, you can just modify the code that's in, um, that's in the JS bin. Um, and you can also see, oh, I don't know why. Uh, if, like me, there's nothing in the output in JS bin, uh, go ahead and refresh the page. And JS bin is just not behaving. Is anyone else having the same issue where there's nothing in the output? Everyone sees something? OK. We need to figure out what's going on. Mm, there should not be anything in safe. Well, I'm glad it's working for you. I'm going to spend these couple minutes trying to figure out what I do. OK, so Chrome is not behaving for me. Uh, but everyone should be starting off with this. Where they see the, the uh, date being rendered um, and then just an empty box. And then you want to figure out creating a new can component that, let me put up the requirements again. Uh, we want a digital clock custom element uh, that takes the time and then shows a HHMMSS. And if you have questions, 
can ask me. And then we'll go through the solution together. Anyone feel like they're starting to come to a solution? It's okay if no, we'll, we'll be going through it together. All right, let's go through the solution together. And <clears throat> we'll talk about each of the parts. I'm going to, I think it would be super boring if I like typed all of this out live. Um, just be a waste of time. So I'm going to, I'm just going to copy paste and then we'll talk about it. <clears throat> um, 
Okay, so uh, let's, okay. Um, so similar to how we had clock controls defined, we're gonna have another uh, can component extend, which is creating a, a new type of component. Um, we gave it the tag uh, digital clock. And um, here for the view, what we need to show, to keep rendering, to keep rendering this time is uh, we want to show whatever the current hour is and then the current minute and current seconds. Um, so what this is going to do is call those HHMMSS methods in the view model to display. And as long as those are returning new values, um, it'll be able to just update the DOM continuously. Um, so uh, the property that we're going to define is time. We're going to take time in from um, the clock controls component. So if we go back to, um, that does not scroll. Um, OK, if we go back to the clock controls view, you'll notice that we, we were already passing in time to our digital clock component. So we just need to say, OK, the time property, it's going to be a date. Um, then we have the um, uh, then we have our HHMM and SS methods. Um, and these are just uh, taking the time that's passed into us. So the this in here will always refer to whatever is in the view model. So like a new instance of the view model is created, and then that is what this is. Um, so we have the, our, the time. Um, and uh, we're going to, um, uh, we're gonna um, uh, take it by, uh, sorry, we're gonna have, uh, someone correct me, uh, the, uh, oh. yes, thank you, module, um, uh, by 12, and then if it's uh, zero, then we know we have, then we're at 12, otherwise we're just gonna show the, um, the hour that we're at. Um, because this uh, this get hours I think returns um, will return zero for twelve. Um, the minutes we're gonna get the minutes, convert it to a string, and then pad it out. Uh, we could have done the same thing with the hours. Um, maybe we should have. Um, I go either way on that. Um, so get the minutes, turn it into a string, and then pad it out to. Um, uh, the zeros, and then same thing with the seconds. Um, so this time in, let's go back to clock controls. So remember that every second this interval is firing, and it's going to um, create a new date which has the you know has the current time. That's always going to be passed into digital clock. So it's observing that time property. And whenever it has a new value, it's going to rerun these methods and then update the view. So that's how, like, there's no logic in here for, like, calling these when, you know, calling these every second or anything like that. Just as the time property changes, then these methods are going to be rerun. KenJS is smart about that where, um, like, this, this example is simple because we only have one property. So when time changes, all of them are going to be run, uh, rerun, um, but it only reruns what changes inside of the the function or the method that you define. Um, so if um, if this was using another property in the view model, but these weren't, and that property changed, then it would only be rerunning this and then only updating that part of the DOM. So that's a little all of the magic behind the scenes. Uh, any questions about this? Yeah. Is it re-rendering the hours and the minutes each time? So just the seconds until such time as those other two pieces of data change. Yeah, it only needs to update the um, the thing that was changed. So, <clears throat> but, it, but is, is the time considered? All of those, the hours, the, the minutes, and the seconds, or just? Yeah, so I see what you're saying. So in our case, it is re-rendering all of them, because it's observing when time changes. 
So it'll rerun all of these func all of these functions um, whenever time changes. Um, and then you know a lot of the t a lot of the time uh, in a minute, the only value that's actually going to be changing is the um, is the seconds. So these don't need to be touched, um, but this one does have to be updated. Any other questions before we move on? Cool. Um, OK, so our digital clock, done. We don't need to do anything with it. It's displaying the time perfectly. Now we're going to focus on the Canvas portions. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to create an analog clock custom element or component. And then inside of it, we're going to uh, create a Canvas element. And then we want to draw one circle. Um, that's going to be you know, the, the frame of our, our clock. Um, so what do we need to know? Um, well, we've already gone through the cane component stuff. You're going to do the same thing where you, have, you define a tag. It's going to be analog clock. Uh, and you can define a view and a view model. And then in our view, what we're going to want is just the canvas element. Um, that's all that this component is going to display is the canvas element. So we'll want to have the canvas element. Um, the, uh, we'll have a view model. And then here, we're learning something a little bit new about view models. So we've talked about being able to define our own properties and methods. And there's a couple of special ones that um, if you define them on a view model, you can, um, you can get or set some special information. So we're going to talk about connected callback which is called when, the, um, when a new view model is instantiated for the component. And the component, again, it's taking care of actually creating the DOM elements. So when both have been instantiated, it can pass um, the elements uh, into the view model, and then you can do stuff um, to modify the element that you have. So in this case, in this simple example, our view is just this h1 um, and our custom element is my element so the thing that's going to be passed in is the my element and inside of it is going to be the h1 with first child so we get the element and then um, it's just a you know it's a dom node so we can query it however we want we can modify it however we want um, we can do whatever we want in the connected callback um, in our case, that's going to be important because we're going to want to get the canvas element, and then we're going to need to do the, the drawing. Um, so to, um, to get the what's called the rendering context um, to be able to draw inside of the canvas element, um, we, can, we can get a reference to the element and then call get context. And this is in 2D, uh, no 3D clocks. Uh, tonight, um, <laughs> keep it basic, two dimensionals, uh, two, two dimensions. Um, so that's, that's how we can uh, get the context. And then once we have a context, we can do all sorts of drawing. And how the Canvas API works is basically you're going to set properties on the um, Canvas context and say, OK, I, I want my like I want my line width to be four. I want my stroke style to be um, this color. I want all of these properties, and then you can draw, right? So once you've set up the properties you want for the thing that you're drawing, then you can actually do the drawing. And there's a bunch of different methods for doing um, uh, for doing different drawings. First, for us to be able to draw a circle, we're going to need to call begin path to let Canvas know, OK, we're about to draw a path. Uh, then we're going to, uh, it has an arc method for us to be able to draw a circle. Um, and then we have to uh, close that. And then stroke is what actually, like, you've got the path, and then you need to actually like apply a stroke to it. Um, so that's a, a, another method call. Um, and that's, I think, all we need to know straight off the bat for uh, creating the canvas element for being able to get a reference to the drawing context to set properties here, set properties 
of how we want to draw and then to actually draw the circle and give it a stroke um, and then um, that's it for <laughs> that's it for this um, and these are some some helpful things to know so taking back to uh, at what point in school do you learn is this uh, like geometry stuff uh, when do you when do you learn um, like diameter and radius and stuff so quick quick refresher so you've got the circumference of a circle uh, you've got the diameter is the distance across the circle um, and the radius is the is half the diameter it's the distance from the center out to the circle um, and in our examples we um, we're suggesting okay maybe you have a canvas that's 255 by 255 um, so you'll need to know things like where is the center of the circle and how far is the radius out to out to the end um, so these are just some some helpful numbers any questions before we try and hack on it on our own nope okay cool um, so we'll give everyone a few minutes um, again we want to create a analog clock uh, custom element we want to create the canvas um, uh, we want to have its view be the uh, canvas element, and then we want to uh, do some drawing on the canvas that we create. If you have any questions while you're hacking, feel free to raise your hand and I'll come over.
anyone feel like they're trying to sort of add an answer? A little bit, All right? Let's go through it together. Uh, um, okay, so we want to create another component, and then we want to have a new canvas element, and then we want to use that to do um, our drawing. Um, so let me let me copy this. So let's go through this code. Okay, so. Um, we're creating a new component. We, we've done this already. Uh, cr created the um, a new component with the tag. This time, our view is just going to be the canvas element. So it'll there'll be an analog clock, um, t a custom element that has the canvas inside of it. And then we're going to use that new connected callback method that we that we learned about. And that gets that gets us a reference to our custom element. All right. <clears throat> so what we want is its first child is this um, is this canvas element, and then we need to get the drawing context so that we can draw inside of it. Um, so that gives us our canvas. Uh, then we have a few handy properties for um, being able to calculate stuff. So we set the, our height and width to 255, so that's our entire diameter. Um, then our radius is going to be uh, half that, and then this is a uh, um, this is a little adjustment to um, uh, to give us some room, uh, and then the center, the dead center, is going to be um, exactly half of the diameter. Um, then we can start changing some things on our canvas context. Um, so here we're going to set our line width and stroke, um, and then we're going to go through the actual drawing methods. Um, so we start a path, we call an arc, um, which, I mean, we could look at the docs on MDN for what arc is, but essentially what we're doing is um, we're starting at a center, and then we want to say how wide we want it to be, and then we do the math for um, from a starting position all the way around, we want to draw our arc. Um, so starting from zero and then going all the way around the circumference of the circle. Um, so that's the arc, and then we have to end the path and then actually draw it. Because at this point, we've drawn a path, but we haven't actually like drawn anything to the screen. Um, and that's when we call stroke. Um, and that gives, that gives us um, just, uh, just this circle um, that's taking up the, um, the uh, full, full width. Um, I should point out, so when we subtracted the radius, the reason for that is that because our line width was four, so we wanted our um, we wanted our arc to actually be fully visible inside of the um, inside of the canvas context, which is why we sh we shortened that radius just a little bit, so um, we had enough room to draw the full uh, four pixel width. These these methods are canvas are, are part of the canvas object. Yeah. So as soon as we get um, so we have the canvas elements, and then as soon as we call get context, um, that is. Um, that is the object um, that canvas context is the thing that we can do all of our drawing operations. Um, so it's all in the canvas API that we're, um, you know, draw, we're defining the stroke style and not line width and doing all of the drawing operations. Cool. Any other questions? Awesome. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is draw the second hand. So what we want is uh, we want a line coming out from the center of our clock. Uh, and it's going to, every second, it's going to change, uh, change position. Now, a little secret about the Canvas API. Uh, there's no, we're, we're drawing things, but you'll, you'll notice we don't have we're not dealing with any like objects. It's not an object-oriented API, really, where like we're creating the arc path object and we can modify it or that sort of thing. It's just for um, it's just for drawing. So we're going to instead of like actually um, instead of actually like um, moving 
a second hand around the clock. What we're actually going to do is just wipe out the entire thing and redraw from scratch, which is fine. We're doing it, you know, once a second. We don't really have to worry about only drawing the min or uh, clearing the very minimum that we need to for our, our application. Um, so we can just wipe the whole thing and then redraw the, the clock. Um, okay, so we're going to draw the second hand needle um, whenever the time changes. And then we're saying that we want it to be two pixels wide. It's going to be red. And then it's going to be just short of the um, full radius of the clock. So it's going to be 85%. Um, so what do we need to know? Um, so we talked about connected callback. That happens when the uh, view model and the elements are, and the custom element are both instantiated. Um, and then we can start doing stuff with the elements inside. There's also a method called uh, listen to that a view model has, where we can say, OK, I want to subscribe to the changes in a property in the view model. Now, in most applications, this sort of thing isn't required because where are those properties being displayed? in our view in the DOM. So we just have the curly braces, and then we can display that value in the DOM. We don't have to worry about listening to things and what have you. But in our case, when we're drawing our, our clock, um, we need to know when the time changes so that we can clear the context and then draw redraw the clock. Hi, is this for JavaScript? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, please join us and um, let me grab let me grab another table. I don't know. I'll give up my table. Oh, we definitely can. Okay, we definitely can. Okay. We can just grab the other table from the back. Yeah, let's take that one. Sorry about that. We were, it took most of our time. I am so sorry that it was that okay. time. We, we were in the front and no one off. was around, so we were like, did anything? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, okay, so uh, we can call um, we can call this listen to to find out when the time changes, and then this call this function will be called whenever the time property changes in our view model, and it's it's given two things. There's an event, which is the change event, and then the new time value. So this is going to be our new date. Um, so that's how, within connected callback, we can listen to when the time changes. And then uh, this little bit, um, this gets a little bit complicated to try and explain um, kind of the math behind drawing the seconds. I'm actually thinking that we might, we, we might do this one together and talk about the solution, because uh, I feel like I'm lacking as a teacher to properly explain the math to talk about, OK, how you calculate the, the in an abstract way, how you calculate the angle and then use cosine and sine to get the correct stuff. I think this one, instead of stopping and, um, and trying to accomplish it separately, uh, we're going to do this one together. Um, the short of it, though, um, is that we're going to uh, define a function that's going to take in the number of seconds. Um, and that's how we're going to be able to determine um, of the circumference, um, of the entire circumference at what angle um, is the 
is the second hand going to be at? Um, so everyone, cheat with me. Just copy the solution, paste it into your code, and then we're going to we'll we'll talk through the the changes. Um, so first, we have this base 60 to radians uh, function that we just mentioned. Um, this in our, you can expand these to see. So in our connected callback method, we're still going to have the, um, the circle that we need to draw. And then every second, what we need to do is we need to clear the entire canvas rect, or the entire context. Um, we're duplicating our code at this point. We're copy pasting our circle drawing, and we're putting it in here too because we need to. Um, we'll need to redraw the circle if we clear everything out. Um, now we're going to do a little shortcut. Um, so instead of doing canvas dot line with canvas dot stroke style, canvas dot line cap, um, and assigning all of those, we can just assign the ob um, the values from this object to the canvas context. So the um, and then now we can get into the exciting math of how the second hand is drawn. So the first thing that we do is we get the number of seconds from, uh, from the clock, um, and then we're getting real accurate and also getting the um, number of milliseconds too. Um, the size is going to be not quite the radius, but 85%. Um, and then our X and Y in the entire coordinate system is going to be whatever the cent center is, and then we're going to do the adjustments from there. So here, we're passing in the seconds, and this is going to, this is the math part where I don't feel as proficient to be able to like explain and teach, um, but we're going to take the, um, uh, we're gonna take the number of seconds, and then we're going to be able to get the angle uh, the angle of the second hand. So for the x coordinate, we're using um, the sine function, and we're essentially saying whatever that angle is times the um, times the length that we want, and that's going to get us from the center to some point outside of uh, um, to some point in the circle that's you know eighty five percent of the radius away from from our center. So that's how we get our x, and then our y is similar, where this time we're using, um, we're using our same helper function, but we, we're using cosine um, to get the, um, the y position. Um, and then we can do similar drawing that we've done before, where we start a path. We basically, you can think of the canvas drawing as like you have, um, you have like wherever you currently are. Um, so you need to like move the tool around and then you can draw paths and that sort of thing. Um, so we move to the center and from the center, that's when we draw the line to wherever the, the second hand should end. Um, we finish the path. We still haven't drawn anything on screen. We just have a path. Um, and then we call stroke and it applies the, um, it applies whatever properties are currently set on canvas. Um, to draw the path. That was a lot. Um, what I kind of want to focus on is um, if there's any questions about that general concept of um, how we're listening for the time to change and that how we're overall uh, redrawing the clock. Any questions or comments? Yeah. So is it redrawing the whole clock? With each second or just the second hand? Yeah, because otherwise we would, if we wanted to avoid that, we'd need to keep track of where we've drawn and then just clear the bits of where we've drawn right. to be able to redraw just the things that have changed, um, which you can definitely do, but I feel like <laughs> it would be <laughs> uh, even more complex for this. Um, but in like games and things, um, you you're typically like just redrawing the the parts that you need to. Um, but because you can think of canvas as just a like blank canvas, and um, we're creating these paths and we're drawing these things on it, and the only thing there's no layers. The only thing that we can do to 
redraw a certain point or erase what we've done is to clear out the entire section on the canvas. Cool. Any other questions? Yeah. I don't, it's not so specific to the two hands here, but how do we know which are CanJS functions and which, in this case, are Canvas API methods? And it, 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 it's difficult to differentiate, at least for me. Yeah. So for for what we're doing here, we um, we're kind of using um, CanJS for um, just giving us our, uh, at least for this component, we're just using CanJS to be able to know when the time changes um, with the listen to, to be able to have it do the creation of the Canvas element, and then we listen for connected callback to get that. And then everything else is um, using the Canvas API for the actual drawing. Um, and in earlier, this is a little bit confusing because in earlier cases and in a lot of applications, what you're just doing is displaying values in the DOM and having buttons and um, you know paragraphs of text or whatever. Um, so like our um, our digital clock um, wasn't using any of the like Canvas API, and we were relying on CanJS's Can Stash to be able to like display values in the DOM. Um, so a lot of times this, um, like this is how, with templates, is how you're actually building applications. Um, and it's, um, or I think it's cool that KinJS gives you the, let's go back to this. KinJS gives you the tools to be able to still do the DOM stuff really easily and get what you need to do any custom things like, you know, using Canvas to draw an entire clock, or if you were building, um, uh, if you were building anything else where you need access to just the DOM elements, maybe you're building a video player, an audio player, and you need access to be able to set up your own listeners for seeking or whatever, um, you can get access to that. Any other questions or comments? Cool. And in the back, did he show you the uh, getting yeah. to the guide and stuff like that? OK, cool. And you guys got the JS bin set up and all that jazz? Mm -hmm. Sweet. Um, OK. So um, if we kept going how we were, we already duplicated the code for like drawing the circle and had that happen again in our, um, in our um, listen to method. And we've drawn the second hand. We need to draw two more hands, the minute hand and the hour hand. And we could keep on duplicating code, but I think this is the time where we should refactor it a little bit and change it so we only have one thing that is drawing the uh, clock, and we only have um, one thing that generically can draw a needle, and then we can pass it what we need to for like the color and the size and <coughs> Um, where the second hand should be, where the minute hand should be, where the hour hand should be. Um, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to change our code so we clear the canvas before we draw the circle and the needle. So it's all going to be the same code that's doing that. And then we're going to refactor, rewrite the code that we have. And um, we want to we want to have a draw needle method that can take how long of a needle we want, where it's going in the circle, and then any st additional styles that need to be that need to be applied to it. Um, so we want a draw needle function uh, that takes those three things. Um, so what do we need to know? Well, first off, we can get rid of the circle drawing that's happening inside of connected callback, but outside of the listen to, we can drop that completely because the listen to will always be called when, um, when the time changes. So we don't need that extra call. Um, we can use this um, uh, clear, or clear rect method to clear the entire canvas. Um, and I think, we're, I think we're actually already doing that. Yeah, we're using clear rect inside of listen to right now. So we can continue using that. And then, 
we want to create the draw needle function that takes those three things to do the drawing. So we'll take a, we'll take maybe uh, five minutes, and um, at this point, uh, you don't need to do the math for the hour and, and um, minute hands. Uh, we're just going to refactor the code that we have to um, make it so that we can reuse it a little bit more um, in future steps. Uh, any questions before I give you a few minutes to complete stuff on your own? Cool. And please raise your hands if you have any questions, and I'm happy to help.
anyone feel like they're starting to come to a solution? Cool. We'll take a couple more minutes and then we'll go through it together. Got the sign only created in ES6. I feel like it was. Oh, wow. Even, uh, I guess it was. Yeah, IE doesn't support it. So um, it was a recent change. By recent, I mean. <laughs> Right. <laughs> last few years, yeah. <laughs> In the last like four or five years. Yeah. yeah, definitely not required for this, but I feel like it's so much nicer to have an object that you can just assign or copy the properties over to Canvas than assign those one by one, especially for how we're going to refactor this, not having to like get an object and then iterate through its keys and block. Cool, let's, uh, let's start going through the solution together. Um, unlike the other ones, I wanna actually code this one. Um, I think refactoring is fun to talk about, which is hopefully the nerdiest thing I say today. Um, okay, um, who wants to get me started with what we need to do? Our goal is to make sure we're clearing the canvas and refactor this so we don't we don't have the duplicated like clock frame code and we have a reusable function to be able to draw uh, needles to draw the hands. Um, who wants to get me started with the uh, uh, first change that we should make? Anyone? Okay, I'm gonna get started by deleting this, uh, uh, drawing the circle. So we're, we only need to do uh, that once, and that's gonna happen every time that the time changes. So we don't really need to um, draw it first when connected callback is first called. Um, so I'm gonna delete that. Um, what should our next step be for refactoring, um, refactoring this code? Yeah. Uh, take the process that you could create the second hand and turn it to the point that you can just re refactor it for our minutes hands. Yeah, I th I think that's a that's a good idea. So what we're gonna want um, in this, what can we take? So the seconds that's that's custom for the second hand, um, but. Um, and the size, we're, we're gonna need to pass that in too. Um, but all of this code, we can actually take and we can reuse it for, um, for all of the other hands that we need to draw. Um, so I think in the like what you need to know, it suggested um, kind of a method signature. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna put it in the um, 
in the connected callback because we don't need to um, we don't need to redefine this helper function inside listen to every time we can define it out there out here um, and we'll still have a, a reference to the canvas context um, so now okay we want to accept length base 60 distance and styles um, so I'm gonna copy I'm gonna copy this code and then we'll change it to be just what we um, what we need to pass in. Um, so draw needle, we want to pass in a length. So for the second hand, what's our length going to be? I think it's going to be our, our size. Yeah, it's going to be of the radius, like how long do we want our, our path to be? Um, the base 60 distance, so I think what we want to use here is instead of having the seconds calculated, right, we're going to pass in seconds as our base 60 distance, and then we can reuse the same math for everything. Um, so down here, we want, let's move seconds before then, and then um, we'll have seconds, and then what else do we need? So styles. Um, so these styles, we're, we're going to change between the different hands. Um, so let's, uh, can we delete all of this? I think so. And then for our styles, we're going to want what we're assigning to Canvas here and instead pass it in as an object. the indentation crafts. Um, okay, so we're going to call draw needle with, oh, I got rid of size, and I didn't mean to. Uh, where did size go? Okay. So now we have size seconds, and we're passing those into draw needle. It is drawing correctly, which is great, but we, <laughs> we haven't changed all of this code to, to be correct yet. So, um, so we're getting styles now, so we don't have to call, or we don't have to create that object. We're not creating the second hand. We're, um, we're taking in the size now. We're going to accept that as length. Where does that go? That goes right here. Um, we have access to our center, that's the same. Uh, line to X, Y, that's all the same. Okay, have I missed anything? Anyone see any issues with how we've refactored this? I don't really understand what connected callback. It looks like just some of the specs for the canvas up there. Up here? Yeah, diameter, etc. Yeah, so. Oh, so um, so connected callback is a method that's provided by CanJS. So this gets back to like, what is CanJS? What is Canvas? So all of our like component extends defining the tag view view model, and then all of the like properties or methods on the view model, um, those are all related to CanJS. So it provides a connected callback callback method. Um, that will be called with the elements when both your view model and your and the element or uh, and the custom element are instantiated. Um, so this um, we could actually like these. Do they have to be in connected callback? They could actually just be out here. It's it's not using anything in here. Um, but this canvas we need it in here because we get the we get the custom elements and then we get the canvas element and then we can get the the drawing context. Yeah. Uh, why does drawing the circle the um, So we'll need to, um, because we're clearing it every time, we'll need to um, redraw the circle. And the reason why we need to clear it every time is because we're not, yeah, we'd, otherwise we'd have to keep track of just the line that we drew before. I forgot it's all one thing. Yeah. It'd be easier to manipulate if we were dealing with a like second hand object yeah. that we could just like remove from the canvas and or just like change its properties. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, because it's all one 2D canvas, we got to clear stuff. Cool. Any other questions? And you can do that because there's only a couple of things, those two hands. And if you had a really complicated like drawing or something in the circle, it might take longer to re render. Yeah. So the Canvas API um, has been around for over a decade, it's very fast. Um, the, um, like you can, you know, build games that are using canvas as the, as the draw, the way it draws. I think today you would use, uh, WebGL or something like that, but canvas has been around forever. Um, so nothing that we're doing is going to max out, uh, what, what canvas is capable of. So it's okay for us to just throw the entire context away and redraw. This would be performant on a phone that was five years old or whatever. Um, it's a fast API, which is why like, you'll see that it only gives you the primitives to be able to do like really basic drawing stuff. Um, it's kind of, it's not low level obviously, but it's low level enough where it's, it's gonna be fast. Cool, any other questions? So uh, there's a lot of variables to define as constants. Is that, um... Why is, why is it a constant, like, seconds of size, as opposed to, yeah, what are those constants? As opposed to, like, like var, or, var or let? Yeah. So we're never modifying, um, we're, ne we're never modifying the, um, these, oh, those are our constants. these values, yeah. Um, which is why, like, we, we could use let or var, it'd be perfectly fine. Um, but in this code, it just kind of it just kind of communicates like these variables are never going to change. Um, you know, x here the the size that we have here is not going to change. We'll have x and y in the center. Yeah. So these get this is derived from some of the variables that are passed in to us in this function, which is why. Yeah, if we wanted to, we could just define upfront like, uh, you know, we're gonna have x and y and whatever other properties. But it's okay to just define them in the in these functions as constants. Cool. Good question. Any anything else? All right. Um, I think we're on the last the last thing that we want to do, which is draw the minute hand and the um, our hand. Um, so let's talk about that, what we're going to need for that. Um, okay, so yeah, we want to draw, uh, this should say, I think this should be the our hand. That's a mistake. So we want to draw a minute hand, it's three pixels wide, and then go 65%, and then we want a uh, our hand, which is a little bit wider, and then goes a little bit shorter. Um, what do we need to know? It, it says we have everything. Do we have everything? We've got our reusable function for drawing needles. So really at this point, we can use that function. Uh, we can use that function to um, draw a minute hand and a uh, hour hand. We just need to change the styles that we're gonna use to draw it, and we need to change the, um, the, the length that it's gonna display at. Um, but everything else, now that we have the, the math out of the way in that reusable function, we can draw whatever we want to. We can draw whatever needles we want to. Um, so let's take, uh, let's take five minutes for this. If anyone has any questions while they're hacking, raise your hand and I'll come over.
Anyone have one of the needles or one of the hands drawn? Awesome. Cool. We'll go over a solution together in maybe a minute. All right, let's go through this together. Um, so we wanna draw a minute hand that's three pixels wide, dark gray, and a little bit shorter than the second hand, and then a fatter uh, hour hand that's a little bit shorter. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna write this one too. Um, okay, so draw a second hand, I'm gonna, copy paste this to start off with. So let's draw the minute hand first. Um, so we're gonna need our minutes and this goes a little bit back to your, your question about the const. Well, it, we want a different size for this one. We could say let size here and then reassi reassign the size down here. We might as well just inline these. These aren't, these aren't actually reused anywhere. So I'm just gonna remove the the size variables that we had before. Just put those in the in the function call. Okay. Um, so minute hands. We want minutes. So let's get minutes. And then, um, so not only do we want the the minutes, but we don't just want the minute hand to the needle to stay there while the rest of the seconds are going, and then it gets to sixty seconds, and it it jumps to where the um, you know, jumps to the next minute, we, it's nicer to have that be a fluid motion. So we want to, um, which is what time is doing up here, where it's getting the seconds and then a fraction of the, the current milliseconds, um, uh, which when you think about it, it doesn't actually matter. Our interval is running at every second. So it's kind of irrelevant that we're doing that. But we could increase the, the accuracy of our interval and then have that be even smoother let you uh, try that at home. Um, so for minutes, we want to we want to get the minutes, and then we want um, we want the seconds, um, and we don't need to divide by a thousand. We just need to divide by sixty um, because we're getting the fraction of the um, of how many seconds, right? So it's the number of minutes plus a fraction of however many seconds of 60 um, that time's progressed. Um, so we've got our minutes, um, our radius, what did we say we wanted? 65%. So let's make this a little bit shorter. We're gonna draw our minutes instead. And okay, so we've got our, we've got our minute hand drawn, but we want different styles. So we want it three pixels. We want it to be the stark gray and line camp round is fine. So actually, we could have refactored this a little bit differently before. Um, this line cap, if we're just going to reuse it, what we what we could do instead is just assign it up here, and then we wouldn't also pass in line cap. I'm just going to keep it as is. If we had wanted to change that. Um, okay, so we've got our minute hand, and I don't know if you can tell that it is ever so slightly moving as the seconds progress, right? You can see just the smallest amount of pixels shifting color as time progresses uh, because we're incorporating the seconds too. Um, cool, any questions about our minute hands? 
All right. Just oh, yeah. As a reminder on the second, what is time versus this dot time? Uh, uh, seconds. The this time get seconds. Oh, or, you're doing time back. Yeah. What's time versus this dot time? What are they referencing? Here? Um, that's a great point. I should. Uh, here it didn't matter that it was this dot time. Time. Um, when the time observable changes, we're getting the new time. Inside of here, we also have a reference. The this inside of the listen to is our view model. So it actually doesn't matter if we refer to the um, the time that's passed in or the view model. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Any other questions? All right. Um, let's draw our hour hands. Um, Okay, so draw our hand. We're gonna need the hours, which is gonna be um, our, we're gonna get hours. Um, now this, I think this returns uh, something that we're gonna have to modify a little bit. So what does, what does get hours return right now? Is this eight? Okay. Oh, I've got, okay, so I've got, I've got 20. <laughs> okay, so uh, we should change that. Uh, <laughs> we want, um, what we can do is we can say, uh, what times, uh, 60 divided by 12, right? So uh, times five plus the minutes divided by 60. I think that makes sense. Um, so we've got our hours. This one's gonna be a little bit shorter at 45. And, oh, did I copy the wrong? Okay. And a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker of a line. Okay. So uh, here we've got, okay, so we get the hours, which is uh, 20. Um, and then really this is uh, multiplying it by five um, and then adding the minutes. So. We're not going to be, if I zoom into this, we're not going to be able to see the hour hand to make any <laughs> any noticeable change. Maybe if we leave it for long enough, we might see the smallest shift in color value. Uh, nobody got time for that. So uh, so we've got our hours. We're drawing it at, um, uh, at a different length and then a different style. And I think, I think that's everything. Uh, uh, any any questions about how we filled out that hours? Cool. Um, that concludes going through the guide. Um, if you if you scroll down to the very end, um, it'll have the same thing that we that we ended up with as the result. You can open up that JS bin and um, and hack away on it too, or it'll be very close. We we might have written the code slightly differently because we did it on our own. Um, but it'll be very similar to what we wrote. Um, <clears throat> any questions about kind of overall um, how we used CanJS, why we used it, Canva or the Canvas API, anything like that? Any higher level questions? I, I just think in your tutorials, you could, if you colored the can JS related methods, it would just be a little easier. I mean, you know by heart, but yeah, what I what I what we've talked about for a while is um, or a, a link. I mean, if you really want to get fancy, where you can hover over it, and that would take you to the doc of, of that particular can JS. Yeah, we've talked about being fancy. I think it'd be helpful if, uh, if like, 
next to this line or something, it said, oh, you can look at the docs for king component here, or tag or view model. And then you would just see like, oh, this line is kind of related to, to the library. I don't think we'd be able to mark up everything like, although it would be really cool if we could mark up things like, oh, math.sin, we're gonna uh, link to uh, MDM. Oh yeah, no, but I mean just your CanJS stuff. Yeah. Uh, any other questions or comments about stuff? Is there, uh, what's the adoption of CanJS? Is it like how popular is it? Yeah, so um, it's definitely way less popular than React or Vue or Angular, that sort of thing. Um, we have worked with, um, so the company that I work for, Batobi, we've done consulting for a large number of companies over our 10 plus year history. Um, so a lot of the, um, I'd say a lot of the adoption of KinJS has been at larger companies, um, definitely smaller ones too. But um, uh, I, I wish I could uh, name a certain um, large company that doesn't talk about what frameworks they choose to use, but they use a lot of our stuff internally. Um, and then I think I can talk about like um, uh, stuff for Levi's and Lowe's and Sam's Club and other other large companies that have used our stuff and continue to. Um, so our community, our like popularity definitely isn't as large, um, but um, I think our sorry overall like community isn't as large. Um, but we make sure like the entire I'm part of the core team for these projects, and we're always available on Gitter and our forums and um, you know GitHub and that sort of thing. So we just make ourselves very available to answer questions and help people and. Um, one of the things that I love is like we we host these hack nights um, uh, every five or six weeks, um, and I actually would really like your feedback on if this one was like interesting uh, and what you guys would be interested in learning about uh, in the future. Because we'll you know we'll build these guides and then we'll um, we'll go through them at the um, at our meetups and we kind of custom build them for the meetups to be able to show people how to build stuff that they're interested in. So, yeah. Cool, any other questions or comments? Awesome, well, uh, we have the room for um, another 10 or 15 minutes. Um, so I'll be around to talk to you guys. I'd be really interested in hearing more about what you guys do and what you're working on. and. Um, stuff related to uh, um, to uh, web development. Um, for everyone who is watching on the live stream, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll be back in another. Um, we'll be back in um, another five or six weeks with another one of these. Thanks for watching. <laughs>